Hello, this is Mr. Mabry, and we are going to do some kinetic theory notes. Now, what you're going to need to do first is set up your note page like I've got here on my screen. Let's title it, put your name, date, period on the right side. Then I'd like you to go ahead and write out this online simulation site right here. Then let's put three states of matter, write these words, try to draw these three pictures as best you can, and then make room for like a little tiny chart underneath. Something here, 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 here. And then we're going to write a couple statements down. Go ahead and pause it for a second to set up your paper this way. Okay, the first thing we're going to do in reviewing kinetic theory, because this is something you've learned in 6th and 7th grade, is we're going to go to this website. That's why I wanted you to write it down because it's a really fun website to play around on to see if you get the concepts of kinetic theory. So I'm going to click here and you'll be taken to a web page that looks like this. It looks sort of confusing, but if you click on Run Now, you're going to get a screen that looks like this. So here in this screen, we've got this weird little cylinder with a thermometer that tells us how hot it is and a unit we're unfamiliar with called Kelvin, but we just know that means sort of warm. You can see I've chosen oxygen, and here we have oxygen in a gas-like state. And like you've already learned, the molecules are just bouncing off the wall. Boom, 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 boom. And then, um, if I start to cool off the gas, notice what happens as I put some ice cubes in there. The temperature is decreasing. Do you, do you see a decrease right here? Watch the temperature decrease as I apply ice, and the molecules are slowing down. As they slow down, they can't bounce off the cylinder as much as they used to. And they drop to the ground, and notice even as they get really, really cold, they never stop moving, they're just vibrating. And that picture you just saw of how molecules will get faster or slower depending on temperature is the core of the kinetic theory. And of course if I apply heat, the opposite will happen. Those little shivering molecules get more energy and they start moving around more. And when they move around more they realize, I don't have to hang around these guys, I'm going to spread out. And they start bouncing off each other. Now if you don't want to heat it up or cool down, you can just click on these buttons over here to see oxygen as a gas is bouncing all over the place. Oxygen as a liquid, it's still moving around, but it's not quite as crazy. Or oxygen as a solid, it's pretty stuck together. Notice it always keeps moving, it's never completely unstuck, um, but they're vibrating next to one another. You can do this with water, with argon, or with neon. And then what's really fun is you can play around with this guy's finger and you can apply some pressure um, and all sorts of crazy things will happen. I don't want to show you exactly what because I want you to come play with it. But this is a really cool website. So let's come back to our note page now and, and fill out some things that can help us remind us the differences between solids, liquids, and gases. So here we have our solids that are vibrating, our liquids that are spread out a little more, and here we have our gases. So the words we want to remember is that when we are having a solid, those particles are always vibrating. When we have a liquid, they got more energy, so instead of just vibrating, they're starting to be flowing around one another. And you give them even more temperature and heat, and they're going to start rocketing around the container. And of course, examples of this would be anything that's solid. This could be... Let's keep it red here. This could be aluminum foil. This could be, you know, like your desk. Uh, this could be a cup. It could be anything that's a solid. Which is weird because when you look at a desk or a cup, you think, look at this coffee cup. It looks like it's not moving. It looks like it's solid. But we know those particles are always vibrating. That shouldn't mess with your head if you think about it. For flowing, this would be anything. This could be coffee. This could be water. This could be milk. And then for gas, remember, oxygen we breathe in, carbon dioxide. This could be that nitrogen in the air we talked about last unit. Um, all of these gases, this could even be the perfume you spray. It's, um, it becomes aerosized by squeezing the bottle. So we're going to sum up that simulation and those words in a couple quick statements. Statement number one. Matter is made of molecules that are in constant motion. 
And that is our key phrase right there, so I'm going to highlight it. Statement two, these particles move because they possess kinetic energy. And I'm going to highlight kinetic energy because that is key. Statement three, if temperature increases, kinetic energy increases, and the speed of particles increases. This is what we saw when we were doing that simulation. As we increased the heat, the particles started, they got more energy, so they started like bounce around and move around more, which is really fun. And for statement four, if particles receive enough um, energy, then a phase change will occur and vice versa. The last thing I want you guys to write down is, and we're going to talk about this a little bit more in class, there's a concept called thermal expansion that people use in construction. And thermal expansion says because the temperature increases causes particles to expand, you must build buildings a certain way. For example, St. Louis Arch and sidewalks. So what happened when they built the St. Louis Arch is it was so hot in the summer they had to cool the arch down as they built it because the pieces at the top would expand. But the problem with them expanding as they built it is if they built it when it was fully expanded, then in wintertime when it would shrink a little bit, it would pull away and the arch had the potential for just dropping to the ground, which would be horrible. So they kept hosing down pieces of the arch as they built it to keep it cool as they built in the summertime. The same with sidewalks and cracks in the sidewalks. The reason they put cracks in the sidewalks is they know sidewalks are going to expand and contract um, in the wintertime and the summertime, so the cracks in sidewalks allow them to control where sidewalks crack. Isn't that cool? I guess science really does have something to do with our lives.